hey, I've had a few people um, drop me a line and ask me if I could show uh, the steps to making these masks. So I thought I would show you kind of quick like while I sew one up um, and then you can get a really good idea of exactly uh, what you need to do. So you need your sewing machine. And actually, if you don't have a sewing machine and you have a needle and thread, these aren't very big. Um, you can very easily uh, hand sew these. But it's pretty quick on the machine, so if you have a machine, I would use it. I'm using white thread, but it really doesn't matter because your thread will be on the inside. Um, you need to cut... Uh, I'm doing these in stacks, uh, not one at a time. So cut yourself a stack of 6 inch by 9 inch fabric. So nine inches wide, six inches tall. Um, and so just, I just cut myself a big stack of Mac, you know, fabrics that go together. I happen to have pieces that were uh, pretty easy to match up. So I did that, I cut a great big stack. And then the second thing I did was just so, I put them face to face, like so. Th fabric, uh, pretty side to pretty side. And then I just sew the long sides straight, which I already did these, um, but I just sew the long side, take it out, and then sew the other long side completely end to end and take it out. And then I set that in the stack and I do my next one. So after a while, I have a little stack of pieces of fabric, six inches by nine inches, uh, sandwiched together face to face, pretty side to pretty side, and both of the long sides are sewn. So I like to get a nice big stack like that. Um, it just kind of helps to cut down on the, the labor of it for me. And so now at this point, what you're going to do is uh, sew up the sides and insert the elastic, the ear loop elastic. I'm using elastics and making ear loops on mine. You can also use fabric if you want to, like bias tape or uh, something like that, which I'll show you in case you don't know what that is. Um, if you go into your sewing section and you see this, it's called bias tape, B-I-A-S. It's meant to go on something like uh, the edge of a quilt, say. You would open this up, lay it across the edge of your uh, quilt or something like that, like so, and then you'd sew it. So for our purposes, if we want to use bias tape for these, we would substitute this tape for the elastics. Um, I'm definitely going to run out of elastics. Uh, elastic is absolutely impossible to find right now because of the demand for these masks. And unless you happen to have a great big pile in your stash, you may not find them. Um, what I'm using, let me see if I have a label. I bought these at Walmart. I do not have a label, but they are Goody brand hair uh, hair bands. It's actually a long hair band, which I thought I had one not cut, but I might be on my last one as a matter of fact. Um, it's a Goody brand hair band. So it's just one, it's a long hair band that looks like so, that you're meant to put over your whole head. I cut them in half. And that makes two straps, two ear loops. Tie a little knot on the end of each just for extra security. That's going to stick inside the mask. That will, that will live on the inside of the mask. And you'll be sewing over the flat part. If you see these, you may see round and you may see flat. If you have a choice, get the flat. It just sews over uh, a lot easier. If you don't have a choice, any port in a storm, you can use uh, round. It just might be tricky if you don't have a walking foot on your machine. All right, so the next thing that we do now that we have two squares, they're, uh, or two rectangles, they're sewn together all along the long side. They look nice and neat and they're happy. I'm a clipper instead of a pinner, but that's the exact same purpose of these little clips. It just holds your fabric together. But these really don't move. Once you have them sewn together, um, you honestly probably don't even need a clip. They really don't move very much at all, if at all. Um, I sometimes uh, just go through and trim off the little, uh, you know, the edges here, just the loose frayed uh, fabric. That's uh, gonna be on the inside anyway, so I'm not too worried. 
And then I take my elastic, I drop it, I hold, I kind of pinch right here to hold it, hold the knot onto the outside and tuck the rest in. You'll see. And then the knot on the outside on the bottom and tuck and tuck the rest in. So essentially you have a knot, a knot, and then you can feel the rest of the elastic is just living inside here. And this is correct because we're gonna turn this inside out shortly. So it goes inside, you've got a knot and a knot. And at that point, we sew right over that flat elastic. Don't forget to hang on to your, uh, hang on to your thread so it doesn't come unthreaded for you. Couple of stitches forward, couple of stitches back and then straight down to the bottom. If you need to help it along a little bit, just pull it along a little bit by that elastic. It's firm in there by now. And go straight down. And when you get to the bottom, make sure your elastic is still poking out. Mine went inside a little bit. Hold on. Of course it would do that while I'm recording, right? just pull it out there we go because I want to sew right over that flat part again continue straight down over the flat part back a few stitches forward a few back a few I do that a few times so that I make sure it's a nice tight knot in there uh, the trick which was shown to me by Cheryl Cohen who taught me how to sew uh, so we make sure that that's a nice uh, nice knotted area and it's not going to come out Oops, sorry about that. I'll just bump that. Cut the strings. Cut the strings on the other side. Do the same on the other side, but leave open about, you know, about that much. Leave about that much space open because we need to turn this inside out. Um, the original instructions for this pattern said to leave open on the long side but then you kind of have to you have to stitch it shut when you're done and i'm not hand sewing these because really i need to get some done um so i decided to do it on the short end since you have to go back with the short end anyway and make a couple of tucks you have to make a couple of little um folds so you have to sew over it anyhow and so you won't be able to see it when i did it the other way you could see that final stitch and it looked sloppy I mean, not that anybody's going to sit around cursing your work, but you know, it's nice to make it look good. All right, once again, same thing, put the elastic in, you'll feel it just lay flat there. It, it naturally wants to lay flat. We're going to sew to the first marker, end it, and then sew past it to the end. So once again, hang on to your threads so they don't fly out. Couple forward, couple back, straight down to here. Stop, couple back, pull her out. Let me do a quick snip, snip. Snipping my thread, snipping my threads. One more, there we go. And I can take those off because I can see where my, I can see where my stitches are. I'll just start it like, I don't know, half, three quarters of an inch. It really doesn't matter. Just some space because you have to turn this thing inside out. You don't need much space. Believe me, I forgot to leave a hole a few times and I really managed to uh, <laughs> cram it through in a pretty small spot. Okay, so finish here. A couple of stitches on. Back. Straight to the bottom. Make sure your elastic is out. Just pull her out. There we go. Back a few, forward a few, back, forward. All right, pull your bobbin up. All right, make a few snip, snips, snip, 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 snip. Okay, and snip off these two because you don't need extra thread all over the place. I mean, these are gonna be washed, sterilized, most likely, possibly bleached. So I want as much good firm stitching in there as possible so that it'll withstand some, some beating up. And now you've got this little hole, which I thought I left a bigger one, but okay. 
it's a pretty little hole. Just get your finger in there. All right. Reach in and you'll feel that elastic on the other side somewhere that you sewed. If you can, you can just pull it right through that little hole. That's the opposite side. And then just start working your mask inside right. It's pretty, you know, it's pretty thin fabric, so it'll come through. Even if it seems like a super small hole. I barely fit my finger through that, and it came right through. Okay. There's your other loop. And if all's right in the world, it should look like this. So we're almost done. We're almost finished. Now, the problem with this is that it's a big sack, you know? We, it needs to be um, folded in so that it's snug on the ears and then wide over the mouth all right i mean in a pinch you could definitely use a, a mask just like this it wouldn't it wouldn't hurt but when we do these folds it adds a little bit extra uh layer it adds just a little bit extra fabric layer also over the mouth i'm just going to sew this tiny little hole shut just a quick little think just a quick little sew to get that shot okay and I'm not worrying about the back and forth and go over all the stitches because we're going to be sewing right over that again anyway. It's gonna, it's already going to have a second, a second stitch over it. So snip it, snip it. Be careful when you're snipping that you don't snip your fabric. If you have really sharp point uh, scissors, you can. All right. So the last thing that we're going to do, and I'm going to hold this up if you, in case you can't see it. I can't tell what you can see actually. Just make a little fold from the bottom up, about, I don't know, half inch, about a half an inch, I'd say, and clip it or pin it on each side. Clip it or pin it on each side. It's going to, it's going to look like this. And do it again, the exact same way, right above it, nice and snug, nice and tight. About another quarter slash half inch. Two folds is fine. Some of the patterns say three, but you'd be hard pressed to really do that with this size. Honestly, you would really be cramming. <laughs> you'd be cramming some fabric in there. Okay. Same thing. About half quarter inch. The more even, the better, but this is not an exact science. Should look something like this. All right. So it should be pinched on the end, a nice little fold. It should look like a medical mask, just like what you've seen professionals wear. So once again, we stick this in here. And this is a little tricky because it's pretty thick. If you have a walking foot, it is so much easier. I do not, but I need one. So we will go in here. Hopefully this will go nice and smooth. Hold your thread, a couple of stitches, and you may have to help it along just a bit like so okay come on there we go she's coming i'm taking this one out too just in case oh hold on I'm having a slight technical difficulty here okay did that come undone it did all right let me pause you for a minute while i rethread that Maybe I can't pause. All right, I'm just gonna do it quick. So I don't have to fix this whole thing. Quick like a bunny. Get this rethreaded. I don't know about your machine, but whenever, whenever I don't hold those threads down, my thread whips right out of there. It comes right out of the eye of the needle. And I'm pretty sure it's not my eyes. I think they are making needles much smaller these days. Anyone else think so? There we go. All right. Sorry about that. All right. Let's try that again. I already have it held, so I'm just going to run it through. There she's moving along. All right. 
telling you how easy it is. And then, of course, that's when I have trouble. There we go. Let me get that under there. You may have to fool with your presser foot a little bit just to get those folds under. They're very close. They're very tight. All right. At the end. At the end. Just like before. Pull her out. Lather, rinse, and repeat for the other side. I've got a nice little bobbin mess on the back of this one, but we won't look at that. Will we? No, we will not. Okay. Right here. Get that big old lump under there. That's what really causes the trouble is that that elastic knot, it's tough when you get past here, but if you can move past it, you're all the better. All right. Because you're really, you're just tacking these sides down. See what I mean? You're really just tacking those down so that they stay uh, nice and tight and snug. All right. Snip them and snip them and grip them. All right. Okay. So when we're done, if everything goes well, it looks like this something like this all right you've got a couple of folds on here this will go around the ears the face uh, opens it right up like so and you've got some uh, some protection for uh, for yourself remember about masks masks like this are meant for the sick person the person who may be infected and with this virus you don't always know if you're infected that's the whole point um, if there's someone in your house who is sick, say with a, even after this, a norovirus or a, a cold or a flu, and they wear a mask, there's a much less likely chance that you'll get sick. Because if they cough or speak and uh, any sputum comes out, it won't get on surfaces or on you. It's the same with these masks. If someone walks past you somewhere and <coughs> gives a little cough, um, this protects them from spraying some of that out. So it protects you in that way. If it's over your face, I mean, you know, I think psychologically, first off, it keeps you from touching your face, which I have a terrible trouble with. I am incapable of not touching my face. So I'm staying inside because I cannot not touch my face. Um, it does help keep you from that or um, help kids stop from touching their face too. If you have to be out in public at a doctor's office or something, that's helpful. Okay, so that's what these are for. Um, uh, that's what they're made for. They are not antiviral or anything like that. You do have the option, by the way, if somebody wants you to, you can leave the top, a little piece on the top open, say like this much, in case they want to uh, put some kind of a filter inside here. If they feel safer or better putting any kind of a filter that they may have um, maybe a actual real mask inside it to to supplement it. Um, you can absolutely just leave part of that open and and that's fine too. Or you could even just seam rip it and, and do it. Okay, so I hope that was helpful to anyone who's interested to make masks. If you need fabric to do so, let me know. I have a ton. Um, I'm still working on a stack uh, now and I have a little stack that uh, I'm finishing so I can get them sent out to people who have asked. Um, I've got a nice little color variety, I'm trying to stick some multiple patterns in there. Maybe it'll cheer some people up a little bit that need it. And I hope you enjoyed this. Thanks.